All right, guys, welcome to part two. In this video, we're going to be texturing our model. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you haven't yet watched part one, make sure you go and watch that first. That is where we actually model this piece. There should be a link to part one in the description. And also make sure you pick up our free design guide in the description. We'll be using some of those concepts a little bit when we texture this model in this video. So let's hop head first into Substance Painter and texture this thing. You know the drill, I would hope, if you've, got, if you've used Substance, go to File, New. Uh, I'm going to do a 4K document resolution, it should be fine. And we're going to select our FBX file and click on OK. I think we did that at the end of the last video, but anyways, we did it again. Okay, um, now what we need to do is bake out our maps. Now we don't have any normal detail to bake, so that's not really a big concern of mine. So we're going to go ahead and bake out... Uh, curvature, ambient occlusion, and we don't have an ID map. That might actually be a good idea to add one in real quick. This won't take a long time, only a few seconds, so go back into Blender. We're going to go into edit mode, uh, ideally vertex mode for this piece. And the first thing I want to do is, you know, on this little panel right here, select with the L key one of those vertices. It'll select all the linked geometry. We're going to go up here to vertex paint choose a different color, any color, click on this button, and then press Shift K. Now I just want to go back into edit mode, Alt A to deselect, let's select this one, okay, we'll go back into vertex paint and change to a different color, any color, Shift K, and then we're going to do it to this piece right here, Shift K, and then the last one we have to do is the main body. So we'll do that. Vertex paint, choose a different color, shift K. And now we're going to have um, a bunch of different colors here. I almost forgot about this one, which I just noticed. Um, so what I might do is just, let me redo these two. Select both of these. Vertex paint, do like a yellow shift K. Turn on this button and then shift K. And there we go, so now we have our vertex colors. These are a little bit too similar, so maybe we'll do like a like a blue instead. Awesome. So now all we have to do is re-export this. So I'm going to go to FBX, selected objects, and then we're going to export over the old file. So now we just have to hop back into Substance here real quick and reload the file really easy. And then we're going to go up here to our texture set settings. Okay, let me alt to left click to pan around. And what I want to do is I want to bake our mesh maps. I want to bake our ID map. And since we just made it using vertex colors, we'll click on this and choose vertex color. I want to bake our ambient occlusion, our curvature and position and thickness. I don't think I'm going to use so. We're going to leave that alone. And don't worry about these warnings. It's just, uh, it's because we don't have a high poly mesh being used. And we're going to use a 4K output size and click on bake selected textures. It'll only take a few seconds. Even with a slower machine, it's pretty quick. Okay, so now we have our ambient occlusion, our ID, and curvature maps baked. All right, so we're just going to hop right into it. Um, generally, what I like to do is start working with the base colors of our model first. So let me go here. If you click on the drop down, you can choose Smart Materials. And I want to use a plastic, so let me expand this a bit. I'm going to type in plastic. Now, this technically won't, it wouldn't be a plastic, you know, in real life, but if it looks good, it looks good. I don't really care what the name is. So I want to use one of these. You could try like the plastic rough scratch, drop that on. Interesting. You could try like a you know, a used plastic. There's a bunch of different ones here. I'm going to try the plastic dusty here because it kind of like, it has this nice grungy effect that goes into the areas, you know, where you'd have the ambient occlusion and shadows. So you could try that one. You could also try the dirt, but I think this one looks the coolest. Now what we need to do is tweak some of the parameters because it's a little bit too heavy in terms of the dust. So I'm going to go in here. First things first, I want to make this base color. We're going to select it. And I want to make this base color a little bit brighter. Okay. 
and then we're going to go to the dirt edges. Usually what I do is I just turn these off and on to see exactly which one is doing what. Um, so this one's having the most effect. So uh, what I'm going to do is go to the dirt edges mask right here and we can select our generator. And this is super easy. This is an old type of a generator, but it still works pretty well. Basically, you just click on this and you can actually adjust the level of the dirt. You can make it lower, you can make it higher. What I think I'm going to do is keep it where it was, but actually change the grunge amount so it's a little bit less heavy. You can also kind of like play with these AO values and kind of determine like how far out that goes. It's really cool. So what I might do is actually increase the grunge and just drop the AO a bit. Not 100% sure. And I also want to make this color, if we select the color, I want to make it like a gray color. Because I think that'll blend very nicely with the white values. So let's go back to the mask and just kind of play with this a bit more. The curvature isn't really doing too much. Honestly, I would just stick with this AO slider and just kind of play with it. Okay, this looks good. Um, I think I'm going to actually... Should I turn this off? I don't know. For this dust right here, I'm going to go to the mask and just kind of drop the level of this dust just a little bit. Or maybe increase it. I'm not sure. Let's put this to 0.5 maybe and just drop the opacity value like really low to like 8, maybe a bit higher. You can kind of play with that. But this is kind of like the general effect that I want on this piece. It looks good. Okay. So now what I want is a nice contrasting element on the bottom of this piece here. So I would recommend using like a steel material. Those are pretty cool. Uh, you know, anything metallic. So I'm going to go down here to this, um, what's it called, Steel Painted, and see how this looks. A little bit too boring. Let's try this one here, this uh, Steel Dark Aged. See how that looks. This one's a lot better. So Now what I want to do is I want to make sure this doesn't affect the entire thing. I only want it to affect the, the uh, bottom portion as well as this little hook right here. So very easy to do. We're going to right click add mask with color selection and pick the color and since we have our material IDs baked in all we have to do we can pick this one we can pick this one maybe this one not sure I think I'll leave it white it's kind of a hard decision there I don't know they both look really good I don't know I think I'm gonna go with the steel maybe it looks pretty cool but for now, I'm just trying to get the colors in. We can always tweak that later. It's as simple as simply, simple as simply, <laughs> simple as uh, removing one of these little buttons here if you want to get rid of that. Now, I want to show you one of the most powerful ways to add different highlights and accents to your mesh. Um, you know, this really kind of comes into the territory of more design techniques because just as important as design techniques and 3D modeling are, they're equally as important with colors and detail balance. Um, in that area, you know, colors, texture, and materials, all that type of stuff follows the same exact rules. So what a lot of people might do is they might just randomly place like different details here and there and have varied color, but you have to be very strategic when you place it. You still want to echo color in the direction the color is going. So check this out. Um, notice how we have a black and white mask here. And for those of you that don't know how a mask works, basically, the black values are going to conceal that material and the white values will reveal it. So notice we have this steel dark aged, right? The white values, if we just hover over the mask, the white values are corresponding to these, you know, dark areas. And the um, black values are corresponding to the areas that are still getting this plastic material. So if we want to paint in this dark steel material, into areas that don't have it, what we need to do is add additional white values to the mask, right? So check this out, it's so easy. We need to right click and go to add paint because we need a paint layer. And now what we need to do is paint in a white value. White reveals, black conceals, okay? And you're gonna see right now we're set to black, so if I try to paint on here, nothing will happen, okay? But if we set this to a full white, check this out. Now when I paint, it's going to reveal that steel, which, you know, sounded 
like a like a beginning of a rap song or something. <laughs> um, let's go in here and let's search for. We can just click on the alpha and search for rectangle. And notice how this rectangle is kind of like soft. What I want to do is hold Control, right mouse button, and move my mouse up, and that can adjust the hardness level. I want to make a full hardness value of one. You can also just do the slider. Now, just like we did for these 45 degree angles right here, these echo details, we can also echo our color, okay? Very easy. Look for the direction the color is going and echo that color and direction. So notice how this is, this, you know, steel value is kind of like going across horizontally. You can see these horizontal elements kind of defining the direction it's going. I can echo that detail by adding in a horizontal element maybe over here somewhere as well. Now the light's a bit too bright, so I'm going to hold shift, right mouse button, and just kind of move it over here a bit. And what I want to do is I want to put maybe like a strip of, you know, black in this area. And notice how not only does this highlight the mesh a bit more, it also echoes this black detail down here. And it looks a lot better compared to if I did something, you know, like a... Uh, like this. Notice how this doesn't really seem to fit. It's because it doesn't flow naturally with the shapes we have going on. You could technically get away with like a vertical one, but in this case I just want to do a nice horizontal one. And I'm going to make the rectangle a bit bigger. So what we can do is just increase that. And I'm going to click here, hold shift, move as straight as I can, and click here. That wasn't very straight, was it? Um, let me make sure, yeah, we're good. Click here, hold shift, click here, and there we go. Now notice it didn't affect the other side, so if you want to affect the other side, make sure you turn on the symmetry button, and it should be going down the x-axis by default. So let me undo that and try this one more time, now that we have symmetry turned on. That looks good. Still a little bit off-axis, I'm really bad at this. There we go, finally. And then just to kind of clean up the front here, we can just click and just kind of get as close as you can in here. It doesn't really matter too much. You can probably just end it at that point. And also for this side right here, let's do that. And since we're already close enough, we might as well do that. Okay, cool. So now what we have is a nice little highlight that echoes this detail down here. Notice how much cleaner this looks, guys. If I you know, erase this real quick. I probably could have done that on a different layer, but that's all right. Notice how if I erase this, it just kind of looks, it looks okay, but nowhere near as good compared to if we had this highlighting element over here. It adds in additional detail that follows this, the, uh, the shape of the mesh, and that's exactly what we want to have. Now we could do the same thing up here somewhere. Maybe I could, for example, do like a, like a strip. You just click here, Shift click here and do like a similar thing like that. And that's a pretty easy way to get similar detail as well. I want to make this a bit bigger though. And do something like that. And then what we need to do is that did not work as expected. Now, if you want to conceal that black value, you change to and well, black value as in the steel color here, you want to change to a black value is what I meant to say. So to conceal the steel, go to a black value and you can paint it out. Okay? Remember, white reveals, black conceals. I know a lot of you know this, but I like to really kind of expand on that for people who don't. So I kind of want this to wrap around, so let me go back to a white value to reveal it. And... You can hold control and left click and move up and down to adjust the rotation a bit. That looks pretty good. And then we could just go in here and kind of like click to end it off and just leave it there. And to clean up this little highlight we have going on, I'm gonna set this to this rotation to zero degrees. Change this to black to conceal it. Make this a bit smaller. Get as close as I can and then click a little bit too close. There we go, looks good.
See how simple this is guys? If you know how to work with colors, contrast the colors, and echo the colors naturally, you're going to get a very, very clean result. Now I think we could also maybe go in here to these rectangular elements and paint these the steel color as well. Or I say steel color, steel isn't a color, but steel material, you know what I mean. So we're going to go in here, change that to 1 to reveal it. And then just click and shift click over here. Let's go over here. Same thing. Make it a bit bigger. And keep in mind the symmetry is still on, so if you ever want to turn it off, make sure you turn it off because everything is currently getting mirrored to the other side. But overall, that's kind of what I want to have happen right now until I start adding in alphas and things like that. Okay, this looks really clean. I'm super happy with this. What I think I want to do is put like, um, I don't even know how to explain it. This is a pretty, it's not intricate, but it can be confusing. But I want to make like some height detail on this bottom area here. Now check out how easy this is, guys. What we need to do is we need to add in a, a paint layer. And you're going to see we have a lot of different options here. We have color, metal, rough, and basically all of the, you know, the color channel affects the color. So for example, if I change this to like red, I'd be painting in red. But if we turn off the color channel, um, it's, it's not going to do anything. So that's what the color channel does. It should be pretty straightforward. You can turn on or off color, on or off metal, etc. In this case, what's the, okay, I, I, this is totally off topic, but... Ryu and I always get into arguments about how I say the word etc. And he's like, no, it's etc. But I say etc. So like, is so, am, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I just thought of that. That was the most random thing. Anyways, um, all I want to pants in here is the, is the height values. So I'm going to turn all of these off except for height. And the reason I want to do this is because check this out. If I paint in, nothing is going to happen. But if I increase the height value to something above zero... Look at this, I'm painting in height detail. So I can go positive, let me undo that, or I can go negative so it kind of like goes at an indent. It's a really cool. In this case, I want to have this go at a, like outwards, so I wanna be able to go like that. Now, you know, what some people might do is they might go to like a rectangular shape and try to like get in here and, and paint this manually and it, it's, it's gonna be a pain. That's not a good way to do it. What you want to do instead, well, there's two different ways. One thing you could do is you could go to like a rectangular shape and, you know, just find something like this to use as an alpha and just click and paint it in. There's a much better way. What I'm going to do is choose this rectangle here, but I want to use a stencil for this one. A stencil will basically be like a stamp onto the area we're viewing. So if I go here to stencil, what I can do is I can choose one of these grayscale values. So I'm going to go through here and just kind of see like what's available to us. Um, you can also search in this menu and just kind of see what's there. This one is pretty cool. This is the one I'm going to be using. It's called Fabric Diagonal Thin. Check this out. If I drag this into the stencil, it's going to pop up on the screen. And I can actually adjust these parameters. I'm going to make the bend zero so it's completely straight. And I want to increase the tile amount because I want to have a good amount of tiles going on here. Cool, so that's kind of like, I don't know how many I want, like just a few maybe? Cool, so check this out. Now I can actually start painting in here and look what it's doing. It's the easiest thing ever. Now I am gonna zoom in so I can get as close as possible, maybe reduce the tiling a bit. But what I want to do is I want to basically click here Let's make the brush a bit bigger. Click here, shift click here, and then just kind of like, it, I really wish I could, can I drop the opacity of this? I'm honestly not sure if there's a way to do that because it gets pretty distracting, not gonna lie, you know, looking at this the whole time, but this is kind of the effect I'm going for. It is something very simple. Um, let me turn off this stencil and just see how it looks. See what I mean? This is kind of the effect I'm going for. I want these like nice little straight lines. Um, these are kind of off axis right here, which is really bothering me. Like this area, notice that. Let me undo this and try again. So I'm gonna press Control Z a few times. I actually wanna make this go inwards a bit. 
go back to stencil we're going to choose that that uh, fabric diagonal make the bend zero I don't really know the difference between number and tile here it looks the same to me um, but anyways what I want to do is try oh the indent looks a lot better this is exactly what I want so I'm going to go here and just start slowly painting in that detail okay I got a bit too heavy in that in that portion I honestly don't know why it like goes over itself twice if anyone has a solution to that do let me know because I might not know um, but yeah this is kind of the effect I want this looks a lot better now notice some of these areas ended up getting painted that I didn't want to get painted and that's no problem because all I really have to do in this case is get rid of it so what we can do is right click to add in a white mask and remember white reveals and black conceals so right now it's pure white which means everything is revealed but if we start painting in black values these grayscale values if it we paint in black it's going to conceal it so at this point you guys should understand the drill notice when I paint though we still have this height information so what I'm gonna do is go back to the main layer right here make the height zero so that way when I actually paint in we don't get any height information because I don't wanna I already have the height information around here I just wanna get rid of the detail so that's exactly why I wanna keep that at zero so we're just going to go in here and very, very carefully. By the way, if you want to change back to a circle, um, remove where it says rectangle and type in shape. And it's right here. And you can just adjust the hardness level. But I'm just going to kind of go in. And, you know, I, I probably could have done this a bit cleaner when I was originally doing the stencil, but it's not going to be too much hard work. So I'm just going to go in here and just kind of take care of some of these areas that I don't want to have that detail on. It won't take me too long. So we're going to go in, just keep painting. Just be very, very careful. You don't want to really go overboard. We can kind of like go overboard if you're not careful. Um, let's change back to white. And just kind of like, I don't know. Just kind of play with it. We're going to eventually add an edge wear anyway, so this will pretty, pretty much be masks, so I'm not trying to be like super perfect with it. I just want to get as much as I possibly can, so we'll get in here. And really just paint all this in. We'll go in here. And then just slowly get all that going. And then we just have to be a little bit more accurate in this area to get rid of that. You could go in here and fix this interior area if you wanted to, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to focus on this back portion. Drop the size of the brush, get rid of that. Okay, and then all we have to do now is take care of this area. Okay, a bit sloppy, I know, but I got the job done, and this looks good, so I'm just going to do this part now. Just really get rid of these random whatever. We can make this pretty small. Shift click up to here, and kind of use this as like a protective area when we paint down the bottom. Right, and then we go here. Here, take care of this, and that should be good enough awesome great so I have the exact result that I want it's uh, it's good enough it definitely is believable even though it's just hide information see that looks good nice thing about that is it's not any real geometry so I always tell people if you don't need the geometry um, if you do add it bake it or just add it in in a substance painter or something and you're gonna get a pretty clean result that way now I want to show you how you can use a third color a tertiary color which works just like tertiary details on your model. You can use it as just like a nice little accent to make your model pop a bit more. And generally, you don't want to go overboard with this. Check this out. I'm going to add in a fill layer, and I want to make this um, like a darker red, okay? So we're going to go in here, add in a black mask to conceal all of that red, 
and then I want to reveal it now. So I'm going to choose a rectangle. Let me backspace this. Type in rectangle and use a rectangle alpha. Make the rotation zero. And what I want to do now with this set to a white value is just kind of paint in, you know, echo the shapes. This is horizontal, so what we can do is echo that horizontal shape by using it and painting in that red. So here you might need to be careful when you select it, it might not work, but eventually you'll get it. And you could put like a nice little red highlight accent, whatever you want to call it there. Nice little accent over here as well. You know the drill. I'm going to click there. It's a little bit too much. I'm going to go down to here. Cool. And then what I want to do is do this one. Looks good. And actually, I don't want one right there. So let me go ahead and just um, do that. And now you're going to see we have this really nice red accent color. Now, a lot of people go overboard with this. You want to be careful because accent colors are meant to be accent colors. They're not meant to be attention pullers. Check this out. If I made this like a really crazy green color, all the attention gets pulled down to the screen. And, you know, a lot of beginners tend to do things like this because they think super colorful and shiny things uh, make a good design, and they don't. They actually distract attention from what's actually important. So please do not do this. This is going to make your model just lose a lot of visual interest, and it does not follow proper visual design elements. Make the accent colors accent colors. Make them very subtle, but make them noticeable. Don't pull attention away from the model. The screen is just too heavy. The, you know, if you squint your eye, squint your eye right now. Look at what, where does your eye go to? It goes to the green color because it's the most heavy eye poking color. So you want to be careful. If I go back to the red, and you know, I make this a very, very subtle red color. Now when you squint your eye, I bet you won't even see the red. And that is the proper way to use accent colors. It doesn't pull attention, it simply adds to the detail. So now what I have is a nice accent color that is flowing across nicely with these horizontal elements and also positioned in a non-distracting location. And to me it just looks a bit better. You might not like it and that's fine. I just think it kind of makes it pop a little bit more, brings a bit more visual interest. And as a matter of fact, I don't even like this color too much. I want to kind of make it somewhere around here which is even less eye poking. See that? So we're making really good progress here. What I want to do now is work on a few alpha decals. These are pretty fun to add in and they just kind of make like a nice additional level of detail. So uh, I'm going to actually do a fill layer for this one. I'm going to choose the fill layer. I don't want it to be a white color though. So I'm going to click and hold on this picker tool and choose the, just like the background gray or what I could even do is I could right click to add in the black mask go back to this color and then pick from this for example if you want to kind of like copy it so let me go back to the black mask here and I want to use a a different alpha I think I'm gonna backspace this and choose this um arrow element what I want to do is I want to point this arrow element at this little hook right here so let me change this to maybe like 270 degrees it's either gonna be 45 or what is this gonna be 135 okay so we're going to do 135 degrees, control right mouse button and move to the left to scale this down. Now keep in mind, um, this is currently symmetrizing to the other side. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to actually turn off symmetrize. I only want to have the alpha on one side. So once your arrow is a decent size, I'm going to click and put it right here. Okay, it's a little bit too... Um, a little bit too heavy so I'm going to drop the opacity just a bit so it's not as like a eye poking and then what I want to do is go back to the alpha and choose a text so let's go in here let's scroll down and let's find I know there's text in here somewhere you just have to find it okay right here notice how we have a bunch of different texts we can use I'm gonna go for this one right here and we can actually type in our own text so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna type in lock Sometimes it like misses the highlight. You have to make sure you're within the box. So type in lock and then what I'm going to do 
is put this to the right rotation, which is 45 degrees. I just got lucky there. Make sure that symmetry is turned off. I don't know why it was turned back on. And then I just want to click and put that like right there. Actually, I don't know if I like this font. It's a little bit too, you can't really read it. So let me use something a bit more bold. So just something that I can actually read. There's quite a few different ones here. You just have to choose the right one. I just found a really nice one. This one here. I don't know. <laughs> this one's hard to choose from. I'm going to... Maybe I'll just make it a bit bigger. That's what I could do. So I could just go in here, type in lock, and then just make it a little bit bigger so maybe we can read it that way. All right, so now we have that decal, or alpha. I always say decal, but it's basically just an alpha value. So that looks good. Um, maybe we could put another text up here and call it like laboratory. So actually, I don't want to do that one in all caps. We're going to do that. Put that to zero, increase the size, you know, could put like laboratory. And just kind of find like a, a decent spot. You know, I'm always like messing with different sizes and fonts and things like that. I want to make sure this is actually readable though, so that's why I want to put it properly. And then next to that we could put like an arrow, but I don't think I want it here. Let's put it. That's a good spot, I think. And then we can use like an arrow. Not too big. That's way too big. Let's go like something like that. Just find a good spot. And then this kind of like points over to a certain area. So, you know, if you put this in a scene, this could easily point the viewer to like, you know, where the laboratory might be which is pretty cool. I definitely like that. It still kind of like echoes those horizontal elements as well. As you can see here, it just kind of makes this pop a little bit more while still maintaining proper balance and I really like it. Now what I want to do is add in a few more height details and then I think we'll be done. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to our, let's just add in a new fill layer. I want to turn off everything except for height, increase the height a bit. And basically what I want to do is right click to add in a black mask and I want to choose a, a circle. So if I type in circle, I can just find something or I can just type in shape, which is the default one, which is a circle, make it fully hard. And then if I go in here and click, I'm going to get like a little, little bolt down here so I can do that. Let me turn on symmetry for this one. I could put one right there, right there. Then, you know, if I wanted something bigger, I could put like two here, which to me is a bit too eye poking, so I'm not going to do it. And then over here, we could do like some really small ones. Those are a bit too big. You know, just do something like this. Okay. And then if you wanted to like, I don't know, get like a nice contrasting color here, you could always go play with the mass again. So if you wanted to make this like the white color, you just go to the steel dark aged right here, turn this to black and then just click. Now I don't think I'm gonna do that, it's a bit too distracting, but I'm just saying that is how you would do it. Okay guys, so we're about done here. I'm really liking how this looks. Uh, what I do wanna do is add in a little bit of dirt kind of like on the surface. So to do that, I'm gonna add in a new fill layer. I'm going to make this a pretty dark gray and then right click to add in a black mask and then right click to add in a generator. And there's a few different options here. You have like dirt, which is probably the one I'll use. Um, you have like metal edgeware if you wanna play with that. Actually, that one does look pretty cool. So what I might do is use the metal edgeware but significantly drop, you know, how much it's like eating at it because I don't want it to be like too messy. And you can just kind of see the edges pop a bit more. But I mean, it's kind of up to you if you want to play with it. It's, uh, you know, the higher you go, the more dirty it's going to look. Eventually, it'll just look too fake. So feel free to mess with that. If this is like a construction zone or something, then maybe, you know, maybe this might actually be a bit, a bit more dirty, but I don't want it to be that crazy. So just don't go overboard with it. And then we could also add in another generator 
and this one could be like a dirt, but we're gonna really drop down this dirt level. And this will just kind of like get into the little crevices and things like that and kind of like make it pop a bit more. You might wanna put it below the metal edge wear, so that way you get a little bit of both. Or maybe not, let me go up here. I'm just gonna remove it. I, I think it's fine where it was. Um, plus I think, I don't know. I don't know how much I want that edge wear. I mean, it looks good, but does it fit is the question. I mean, it kind of does. It makes the edges look a bit more natural. As much as I hate to say it, it does look good. So you just want to keep this very subtle. You don't want to go too heavy on it, because if you do, well, you saw what happened. It just goes too crazy. So just don't go overboard, and you should be fine. And I also missed one more thing. I want to go back to this um, alpha layer here. And you can just rename this, by the way, if you want to. But I want to go here, choose this arrow one more time, set the rotation to 90 degrees, and just put like a little stamp right there, and a little stamp right here, just for some small little arrows or something, maybe a bit bigger. And there we go. And finally, I'm just going to go back to this top layer and drop the wear level just a bit, just a tad bit, and I think we're good to go. So there's obviously a lot more you could do to this if you want to, but I think this is a very good stopping point. I'm definitely happy with the result overall. So now what we can do is just kind of um, pan around, so let's do that. You can hold shift and right mouse button to kind of move around the light and just see how it looks. And overall, this looks really, really cool. This looks like an asset you could actually use in some sort of sci-fi scene. All right, so that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I put a lot of effort into this one, including a few re-records, just to make it tip-top shape. Like, the best thing I can do for you guys is have good teaching skills because so many tutorials lack that, and I kind of want to make sure everyone can follow. So if the video did help, please drop me a thumbs up. It does help more people find my channel and helps me out that way. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I'd love to see your results, so feel free to send me your result. And also make sure, like I keep saying, pick up our free design PDF. You can use it as a reference when you're modeling. I think it'll be super useful to you. So thanks a bunch, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.